One of the most important aspects of SEO strategy today is really understanding the intent of the query and the results that are shown based on that intent. In this video, I'm gonna show you how you can use Google Sheets to analyze the search results and extract important information that you can use to better formulate your strategy. Before we get into the content, I just wanna say thanks for watching this video. And if you found our content helpful, please hit the subscribe button. We create new content each and every week to help you with your digital marketing and SEO strategies. As I said in the opener, we're gonna walk through how we can leverage Google Sheets to do SERP analysis. I'm gonna show you how to pull all the links from the search results and put them into a Google Sheet, and then how we can use a few simple functions in order to extract information that can be extremely helpful when it comes to developing a powerful search strategy. So let's go. So one of the fundamental practices of a good SEO strategy is actually understanding intent and also understanding what the SERPs look like and comparing the information that Google's pulling and showing uh, in the SERPs and then understanding how we might need to optimize our page so that we have a better chance of actually ranking. So one of the things I advocate for all the time is actually looking at the search results, understanding what the search results page looks like. So for instance, this term SEO, we've got a knowledge panel here, we've got books right over here, we've got tons of images up here in the knowledge panel, we've got the number one listing here, we've got people also ask questions, and then a number of links uh, as well as a local pack. There's quite a bit of information just within this one search result. Now, it can be overwhelming when you come here and you go, what do I do with this information? How can I see it in a way that will maybe help me analyze it a little bit better and actually use it in my SEO strategy? And this is where leveraging Google Sheets is really powerful. But how do we get all this information into Sheets and then how do we extract the information we need in order to help us make better decisions? Well, that's what we're gonna be walking through in this video today. I'm gonna show you exactly how you can get these URLs off of the search results, put them in a sheet, and then use Google Sheets to do the rest of the pooling of the data for you using some extractions. Now, it's not as scary as it sounds. It's actually a lot easier to do than it sounds, and it can be really helpful when you're building your strategy. So you understand the terms and the structure of what your competitors are using and how you can use that back in your strategy. Now, once you get this information into Sheets, it's, it's actually much easier to see the title tags and the meta descriptions and maybe some of the concepts that they're using to allow themselves to earn those powerful results. Now, there's a couple things that we're gonna do. Um, the goal of this video is to make sure that it's completely free, so you're not actually gonna have to buy any tools or use anything that's gonna cost you money. You're gonna be able to do it free, extract it straight from search results, put it into a Google Sheet, and start to work with it there. Now, I'm gonna have you just create a bookmarklet it's not as scary or hard as it sounds, and we'll walk through that process first so that you can actually extract this information. So what a, this bookmarklet will do, so right now I actually have it installed here. It's called Extract URLs. You can name it whatever you want. Is It's going to pull all the URLs here and put them in just a list. All I do is click it, and there it is. So as you can see, I have all of the URLs, even the URLs that are behind the people also asked. So we've got these search results, and like you said, all I did was click this button and it extracts all the URLs for me. I can easily just copy now and paste this into a Google Sheet and start working with it. But how did I actually get this to work? Well, I used a bookmarklet, which is right here. Now, if I go ahead and go ahead and hit edit, you'll see that there is a line of, of JavaScript code right here that's actually triggering this. You can simply just open a page like you know google.com, and I can go ahead and take this URL here and just drop it into this bookmarklet. Then you just need to take the code, which, which will be available on our website. I'll, I'll make it available there. I didn't write the code. I've got it from another SEO. Um, but this code is, is, is pretty standard. Uh, and what you would just do is take this code and you go over to the bookmark that you just dropped. So google.com, which I don't really need this one, right? I'd right click it and I'd click edit. Where it says URL, you just replace that with the, with the script that is from over here. So again, edit. We'll go ahead and copy this, go back here, click edit, and paste. New extractor. And that's it. 
now it will work. So once again, I go back here, I click my new extractor, it does it for me, just pulls them immediately. Now, if you wanna pull 100 results, you'll just need to change your settings in your search settings, and you can pull all the way up to 100. And now it's gonna show 100 search results, it's gonna extract 100 URL straight from your search results. So whatever you set the settings here to, and whatever's on the page, it's gonna extract that for you. And once you have this list, you can easily take it, once again, and copy it, and then we'll go over to Google Sheets and paste it in. I like to leave the top one open because you're gonna want to uh, go ahead and hit URL in here because we're gonna start doing some analysis. Now that was an easy way to extract the URLs. As you can see, we've got all of those URLs here from search and we can start to do some analysis on it. Now that we have our list over here, one of the things we can do is, is organize it you want to just get rid of these columns you know you can simply you can just go through and delete all the spaces that way it's it looks a little bit nicer so I'm gonna go ahead and do that now alright so now that we've removed these these unwanted rows now we can really get into analyzing the search results themselves the first thing I like to look at is SERP features so I'll add a column for SERP features and I'll actually go back to the search results and I'll take a look at them so the first thing I'm going to see here is Moz Beginner Guide to SEO. Notice underneath here we've got site links. So we've got four different site links right under this Beginner Guide to SEO. If I go back to um, this link here, we have the Beginner Guide to SEO, and we've got the four site links right underneath it. So I'll go ahead and annotate this for myself. Again, this process is a little bit manual, but this is really important because it really helps you understand the search results. So there we go, we have the four site links. We continue to walk through these search results and we see, okay, what's next? We've got, what is SEO? Search Engine Optimization 2020. What is SEO? So that's the organic listing here. But notice here, we've also got it down here. So these four links are actually the people also asked boxes. So this is why, again, you wanna walk through it. I've got, what is SEO? I've got four people also asked links. So there's still information right here in the search results. I'm not gonna open these because when you do that, it expands and expands and expands. Um, but I'm gonna go ahead and now tag these as people also asked. We've already gotten eight links here before we even saw the second search result. That's why these SERP features are so important because they can really change the positioning of your site. Even if you're not showing visibly right now on that first page, if you've been able to push yourself up here into the people also asked, that's a huge jump. You've actually jumped the results here for the what is SEO and Google's expanding and adding more and more people also asked to a number of search results. We've seen that recently rise. So these are definitely important parts of the searcher's journey because it can help you really target people with specific questions. All right, so jumping back to the search results, we've got the what is SEO. We have the search engine land article here. We've got the support article. We've got Neil Patel. We've got some of this local pack here. We've got the Wikipedia. We've got WordStream. Again, we just want to make sure that everything is annotated the way that it should. Notice here that it's even pulled in the local pack here. So I have to go ahead and annotate these as local packs. This is important so you, again, you know all the different op opportunities that you have here in search. We've got Wikipedia, we've got WordStream, and again, we want to make sure that we don't have any other site links that might possibly be showing up here in the results. So there's a little bit of back and forth when you're doing this early on, just to, just to make sure you actually know what's happening. We've got some top stories here, entrepreneur.com, search engine journal, um, before we get to search engine watch. So here we go, we have some top stories. So again, we want to make sure that we've annotated those top stories. So this will be the most tedious part of the process. Uh, you've got the Wikipedia up here, and this was the, uh, the site link within the search results here. But you've also got the final one, which actually pulls over here, and this is the knowledge panel. So we definitely wanna add that in as well. So this is a manual process. The SERP feature part is 100% a manual process, but it's an important process because you can see this is one query. And typically we'd say, okay, we've got 10 blue links in the search results. Well, as you can see here, for one query, we've gotten over 22 different links on this page. 
Now, some of them are site links. Some of them are people also ask. Some of them come in the form of a local pack. Some of them come in the form of top stories and knowledge panel. And if we look at uh, the knowledge panel, you can see there's more information too. We talked about ranking, cost, and tips, and basics. And all of these expand where there's more and more information underneath each and every one of these. So there's a ton of competition. There's a ton of real estate that maybe we didn't even realize was there. But now we've got to understand what type of sites, what type of content is Google considering? How should we structure our pages? How should we target uh, the different keywords that we're looking at? And we want to do this for each one of our terms as we go through it. Now we want to extract some information that can be helpful to us. Like we know that title tags are important. We know that H tags are important. We know that meta descriptions can influence click through rate, but can also tell us a little bit more about the page itself. So instead of now going through here and copy and pasting title tags and meta descriptions and looking at each page and pull the H1, we can use Google Sheets to help us do that. So now we're gonna use something called import XML. And this is gonna allow us to actually extract the titles from these pages and put it right here into our sheet without us having to do any copy and pasting. I'm gonna start by hitting the equal sign and start typing out import and you'll see import XML is one of the options. Now we wanna find the URL first, so it's easy to do that. We just go ahead and click A over here and then hit comma. Now we need to give it an XPath query. There's a lot of ways to find these, but some of them are pretty standard across the web and a title tag is one of those. So you're gonna go ahead and open your quotations here and then inside of that, you're going to do forward slash, forward slash and lowercase title. So sometimes this will happen. If I go ahead and pull this down, I'm actually gonna create an error because up here um, we'll create an error because it had information to pull down further. So I still wanna be able to pull this you know, further down my site without getting these errors. If this happens to you, there's an easy way to fix this where you would just take this first one, you hit copy, you'd paste special and paste the value only. And now you can do the process again starting here. So again, we would do import XML, the path, once again, open and close, go back to it, title. So the Moz pages are doing this uh, quite frequently, which is kind of funky and frustrating. So you might have to do a little bit of finagling depending on what you're working on. But normally if I pull all the way down, usually we'll be okay, <laughs> like in this case right here. Uh, the Moz articles definitely have uh, extra titles and it could have to do with the way that their guides are set up. They might have multiple titles there for some reason. Um, but as you can see, as I just pulled that down, what it's done is it's given me every single one of these titles for each one of these pages. Now, I will have to go back now and extract these ones specifically because again, see, it can't expand because of rewrite. Another thing you can do if you wanna make sure that this doesn't happen is you can use something called transpose. If you put transpose at the front of this, what it'll do is it says, instead of pushing that data down, push it to the, to the side. And so for these Moz ones, we can absolutely do that. Um, and it will solve that problem for us, at least for right now, until we, we head to the next step. So I'm gonna go ahead and do that. That way I don't have to actually go copy and paste. Now, just a little bit of my history, I don't have a background in learning how to do Excel. Um, honestly, I'm not, uh, this is not something that I would have said I would ever be good at. But by practice and trying these things over and over again, I've been able to get much better at it. And it's really helped speed up the research process when it comes to understanding the search results. Now again, if I want to get rid of these extra things over here, I can hit copy, paste special values only, and that will go ahead and take care of that. So even with that little bit of a hiccup in the process, that was a lot faster than me going page by page, trying to understand exactly how I was gonna achieve this. Now there's a number of other things now we can extract as well. We can do the, the description, we can use the H tags. There's a lot of cool things we can do. Now there's a great resource that was created by SEMrush uh, and it's extremely helpful. And I will also make sure that we link to this as well because this is gonna give you some shortcuts that way you have to don't, don't have to figure it out yourself. Um, I'm a huge believer in finding things that other people have already created and using them to make our lives a lot easier. So here's an article, it's the 10 sheet formulas every SEO should know. This article talks about you know a number of sheet formulas that we can use. In one of the sections, section four, talks about scraping data and importing it using XML, which is exactly what we've been doing. 
This is going to give us a cheat sheet for things like meta description, which is the next one we're going to look at. So this allows us to use something that somebody has already created and make our lives a lot easier. So now we're going to go ahead and create a column and call it description. We're going to follow the same process as we did before. Import XML. We still need the URL. Just this time, we're going to be looking at the meta description. So you can just take this right here, copy it, and paste it. Make sure you close that and hit OK. Now, cool thing, if you just double click this button, it'll actually <laughs> pull it all the way down and extract all those meta descriptions. Now, some of these it might not have been able to because it didn't actually have one. Like Neil Patel doesn't have a meta description. Neither does SEO Tech Pro, neither did the Wikipedia page. In some cases, they actually might, it's just they might you know, not allow us to scrape that data. And the last thing we might want to look at would be the H1 tag. Um, why the H1 tag? Typically, this is where people put their core topics, their keywords that they're targeting. Uh, it gives us a little bit more context on the page itself. So again, we want to go ahead and import XML, click there hit our comma, we can go back to this as well. This one's a pretty easy one, the H1. It's just the same as the title, but H1. I'll just do copy and paste here. And then close. Once again, we've got two H1s on this page. So again, in case this happens, we're gonna go ahead and add what we learned before and add the transpose. This makes sure that if there are multiple H1 tags, they're gonna get pushed to the side. And as you can see, a number of these pages do have multiple H1 tags. There's not a huge issue with that, but again, it can help give us more information. So now what we've done, we've pulled our URLs, we've looked at the SERP features, which we've done manually, but then we pulled titles, meta description, and H1 tags all into a Google Sheet. Now we can go through these pages and look at some of the opportunities, look at the title tags that are ranking. What are some of the things that, that people are talking about when it comes to this query? So the query of SEO, we've got a beginner's guide. Beginner's guide, beginner's guide, we've got what is SEO. This is very top of the funnel content, as you can see, for a query that's extremely broad. Do it yourself tips, SEO explained, what is SEO? So people are asking questions, answering questions to these basic ideas of what is SEO? How does it play a role? What should I be doing? We talk about search engine optimization from Wikipedia and understanding it as an entity and what it means from a deeper uh, standpoint. As you can see, most of this content is very much top of the funnel, but I can use this now to inform the type of content I need to create. Because if I want to be considered ranking, I have to have expertise, I have to be an authority, I have to be um, you know, correct in what I'm saying and be trustworthy enough that, that Google will grant me a higher visibility, but I also need to make sure that I'm matching the intent. And typically what Google's saying when it comes to this term of SEO, it's a very top of the funnel intent. I can look at the meta descriptions and understand how can I structure these in order to make sure that mine is, is clickable? You know, some of the things that Moz is doing here is Google SEO best practices. They have it all in caps, you know, trying to entice that click. We've got some that might be a little more in depth that go a little bit deeper into it. Like right here, we talk about the, the SEO, the technical part of the SEO guide and understanding responsive design and the technical aspects. So these can also give us ideas of concepts we might want to cover. It needs to be unique, it needs to be creative, it needs to be standing out. But now instead of looking at the search result and going, wow, there's so much going on here, I can pull it all into Google Sheets and I begin to do my analysis. This allows me to collaborate with my team, we can highlight different things, we can ask questions together. This is a really cool tool and it's all online and we used really simple formulas in order to extract information to make our lives a whole lot easier. I'm actually gonna share this sheet with you and I'm gonna put the codes in it in the first line for you, give you a little bit of a, a head start. But I'm also going to share on our website, if you go and head over there to our blog, we're gonna be sharing the exact code right there within the top so that you can just easily copy and paste it and, and use it yourself. There's a number of other things that you can do. Check out some of the other formulas here if you're curious, um, but this is by no means the extent of everything. There's a number of other great tools that you can use for web scraping. If you're really interested and you're in SEO and you haven't used Screaming Frog yet, check that out. That's probably one of the best tools on the web. It's something that we use all the time here at our agency. Let me know if you have any questions on what we covered today, and until next time, happy marketing.